Hey you guys, it's your girl Brianna Cooley and I'm back with a different kind of video. Um, I know it's been a while since like I posted any um, poetry or music or um, anything, you know, like I usually post. But I was just sitting here, you know, getting ready for class and I was just saying, I was just thinking like they don't really know my testimony. They don't know where I where, I, where I've come from, what I've seen, you know, what I have experienced in life, or, or they don't know what makes my faith so hard and why I go so hard for God. So I just want to share my testimony. Um, I'm not going to get too deep, um, but I just want you to just know about my life so that the next time you, you see my, my poetry or the next time you, you see a story behind or the next time you, you even see um, a three word segment, which is coming soon, by the way. Um, next time you see that, like, I want you to be like, yo, now that explains, like, that explains, you know, why she picks the topics. That explains, you know, why she talks about what she talks about. That's ex that explains, you know, um, just, just the, the, the heart behind everything that she's doing. So I'm going to just start off with, um, with a year, uh, which was, which was 2010, um, 2010, that was a crazy year, um, some people know, some people don't, but 2010, I lost my brother, um, my brother, he, he was killed, and just basically left to die, and you might have heard it in my song, Free, which is on, which is on my YouTube page, um, in, in the second verse, you know, I, I kind of, mentioned and I briefly, you know, just put his initials and date in there. Um that was like the the turning point of my life. That was just like the point of my life where I didn't know if God was was, was real. And I'm gonna tell you why. Um so like before a couple weeks before like he even passed away, um I just saw something different in his eyes you know we were playing basketball like we always do we're always outside playing basketball he, he comes over you know because by this time he was out the house on his own had his own apartment things like that and we're outside just playing basketball i was 12 years old at the time and i just remember like seeing fear in my brother's eyes that i never saw before and like, if you know my brother, like he never feared anything. You know, he always had a smile on his face. He was always laughing and joking. He was always just tough, just strong, just just so cool. Like he was just so like I don't know. He was just so great, not perfect, but he was just so great. So I saw that in his eyes, and then that day before, um, like it really startled me. Like it, it just startled. Just me seeing, you know, just the fairness eyes. Every time, like a, a big old car with like tenant windows would drive by and stuff like that, you know, he would look and just freeze and just like have this fear and like, oh, this worry, like, oh, someone's after me and stuff like that. So I didn't tell my mom, you know, I didn't tell anyone, you know, I just said, I'm gonna just keep this one to myself. But the day of, on the 28th, that morning, I was walking to school, and I began to pray for my brother, just asking for his, his protection, his safety, and things like that. And, you know, that night, he, he walked out the house, and I said, all right, John. I was already outside playing with my friends, and he said, see you later, Bree. And went to sleep, was awakened at midnight, and just to hear that he's gone. And, like, that, like, that really, like, broke me. That really, like, tore me apart because it's, like, I just prayed. Like, I just, I just saw it. Like, I just prayed. It was just this morning, and now he's going, like, no, this can't be. This, this is, this can't be what it is. Like, no, I'm not taking, I'm not having it. Like, somebody must be playing. Like, I just couldn't believe it like I was just shocked I was just stunned and so I remember like just just becoming mad at God 
you know, I always grew up, always grew up going to church. I grew up in a Christian home. My mom was was a pastor. My dad, he was a, a deacon. Now he's an elder. So it was like I always grew up with these um, influential people in my life, and, and and I always grew up going to church and and doing choir and doing um, children's stuff and and doing conferences whatever we were doing like I was involved in church I love going to church I love praising God I love hearing hearing people sing I love just being active and that was like the turning point it was like I was mad at God and then I was mad at myself because I'm like maybe I could have prevented this if I would have talked to my mom or if I would have talked to him and just been like yo like go to mommy daddy like is everything all right like and so for 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 a short while like I really like I really was just in in this slump of I'm not sure if if, if you know I can trust God or if I can continue to, to do this this thing called Christianity and so it didn't take me long you know, to, to stay back to my senses and, and to trust God again. But it was like, once I came back, and I think it saved to, like, well, he died when I was 12 and buried him the day before my 13th birthday. So I got saved, like, by the end of the year. So though that was only a few months, that's a, that's a long, like, four four months and I just remember going to my mom just, just like mom I think it was my fault and she's like why do you think it's your fault like I'm like I saw it mom I saw it I prayed that same day I should have just I should have just talked to you I should have just talked to daddy I should have talked to him and she was like there's nothing that you could have done you know um it was it, it was meant to happen you know even though it hurts, and it hurts her too. It hurts all of us, but you know, it was meant to happen for a purpose, for a reason, and we just have to trust God. And at first, I didn't like that. You know, I wanted there to be a blame somewhere. I wanted there to be some type of reason why, and I wanted to know it. But after talking with my mom by the end of that conversation. I asked her, what must I do to be saved? And we went through the whole process. Like, we went through the confession. And from that point on, I I, I began to trust God more. I began to love on him more. I began to have this fire within me. I began to get, get active again and, and to really, like, pursue my walk and pursue my, my faith because, like, I know that time – Time is precious. I know that this life ain't forever. And if I don't live right right now, if I'm not ready right now, then who's to say that I'll be ready tomorrow? Who's to say I will even have time tomorrow to get right? So that's basically like my testimony, like my 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 salvation and, and you know, my, my drive. It came from a loss, a tragic loss. But I'm still here. I'm still surviving. I'm still pushing. I'm still just going forward. And sometimes it does still hurt. Sometimes it does, you know, still trigger things. And sometimes I am still sad. Sometimes I am still still mad. But my 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 sorrow and my anger is not directed to God anymore. It's not pulling on myself anymore. But I take that and I and I and I press on God just a little bit more harder and that's the difference you know just because I got saved doesn't mean that you know I won't think about those things anymore or I won't go through some things anymore but now I have a greater strength now I have a greater source and that's what I thank God for so since you know I have been saved you know it has like brought a, a passion a desire to to see young people who just have that love, have that have that outlet for, for for them to just talk to and release steam. So like I created Reach Fully and um right now it's on hiatus but 
I created Reach Philly with the with the mindset that, you know, we're gonna decrease, you know, the chances of young people dying. You know, a lot of our young people are getting killed, you know, because they're resorting to, to violence or they're resorting to drugs and things like that to, to help with their problems and their financial issues. But I wanna just be that stepping stone or that help, that outlet for young people. So it has stemmed the ministry and um, I help like with the youth department at my church and it has even stemmed like to my career and what I want to do. I want to be a juvenile counselor, just helping young people, just letting them know that people, there's people out there that love them. There's people out there who's willing to help. They just got an opening mouth and, and let go of that pride, let go of that I can do it on my own. So. That's my testimony, and I hope you guys were encouraged and blessed. You know, if you're going through a loss, you if you're going through um, just things like that, you know, and you want somebody to talk to, definitely reach out to me. Reach out to me on any of my social media sites. Um, you know, I have Instagram and Twitter, and I also have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. My name is Bree underscore Day, so that's B R I underscore D A I. And then on Facebook, I'm Brianna Cooley. So feel free. And if you have questions um, questions about, you know, my testimony and things like that, definitely put it in the comments below. Or feel free to message me on my social media as well. So thank you guys for listening. I hope you guys are encouraged. I hope you guys are blessed. Keep fighting this race. Keep running. Keep believing. Just keep staying with God because he wants to help you. All right. Thanks, y'all.